Greetings. I am Dr. Yasmin Nkrumah Ali, the Global Director for the Chromadex External Research Program. We are celebrating 10 years of this outstanding program that has supported more than 275 studies in more than 30 countries advancing the science of NAD as well as other compounds. To celebrate our 10th anniversary, we have our SERP 10 for 10, a group of investigators that have been nominated by their peers to be highlighted for this program. Today, you will meet Dr. Charles Brenner, a world-renowned NAD scientist and the most published scientist on nicotinamide riboside. Dr. Brenner is a professor at City of Hope and also serves as the Chief Scientific Advisor for Chromadex. Enjoy. Hello, Dr. Brenner. It is so absolutely wonderful to have this opportunity to meet with you. How are you doing today? Doing great. My pleasure. Awesome. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Um, please tell us about yourself as well as your research interests. Let's see. Well, um, I eat, live, and sleep nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, the central catalyst of metabolism. I've been doing so for 20 or 25 years as a professional biochemist. Um, what do you want to know? I mean, I've been doing it for a long time. Absolutely. Just everything. So as the most published scientist in the area of nicotinamide riboside, why do you feel like nicotinamide riboside is so important? Well, you know, I was minding my own business over 20 years ago, working on an enzyme called uh, glutamine dependent NAD synthetase. When uh, I thought the enzyme was really interesting and everyone knew, um, a lot of people knew how important NAD coenzymes are as the carriers of high energy electrons that make life possible, right? But um, in the course of kind of questioning the received wisdom of how NAD is made, um, my laboratory discovered the vitamin activity of nicotinamide riboside and we discovered the identity of nicotinamide riboside kinases. And um, to make a long story short, um, nicotinamide riboside and the pathway is important because it's both a constitutive pathway to make NAD, meaning every cell can make that we know of can make NAD from NR, it's the biggest piece of NAD that can get into cells. And also, and very importantly, because the NR kinase pathway is ramped up when NAD comes under attack. So, so I like to think of the NAD coenzymes as the crown jewels of metabolism. But what's what's surprising about it is that these crown jewels are not kept inside of a safe, inside of a vault, you know, in a castle surrounded by a moat and protected by guards. These coenzymes are exposed to the elements of metabolic stress. And when NAD or NADPH come under attack, you frequently see one or both of these genes, nicotinamide riboside kinase, one or two get ramped up. So it is literally, nicotinamide riboside kinase two is literally the most highly overexpressed gene in heart failure, mm. not only in mouse heart failure, but in human heart failure, that when a tissue needs NAD, it ramps up the NR kinase pathway. And I think that's why, that's really the most powerful use case of why um, taking this particular NAD precursor, NR, um, prepares our bodies for, you know, episodes of metabolic stress, which occur as we go throughout our lives. Absolutely. So you brought up metabolic stress, and there's been these two different theories of thoughts that 
you know, for one side of the thought is just NAD is decreasing with age. But I think you have a better explanation as to why we see NAD lower in some older adults compared to younger adults. Well, it's a tissue, you know, process, right? So, and and we're limited in terms of what we know about humans because no one is, you know, donating their aging brain for NAD research. No one is is donating substantive amounts of of muscle. Um, you know, we could get fat tissue, I suppose, if we really wanted to. I, I should probably do that. Uh, we're going to be doing clinical study in which we're looking at skin from biopsies. But basically, my idea, and I think there's a lot of support in it, is that in particular tissues that are undergoing um, infection, inflammation, um, sun exposure, disease processes, and other conditions of metabolic stress, that um, NAD coenzymes come under, come under attack, and that and that it's not necessarily a, a a consistent gradual decline at the same rate in all tissues, but that we experience conditions of metabolic stress and infection and inflammation and sun exposure and wound, et cetera, et cetera, as we live our lives. And so um, those events are coincident with aging. Um, and then there may be a component of aging itself as well. Yes, definitely that accumulation effect. Um, we see it, you gave a great example once of cat scratches. And so I appreciate it. Now we see that um, in my mind when we talk about this. So just moving on a little bit more, we know that NAD is essential for all cells, but explain to the average person why NAD is important for your overall health. Well, I, I just re-explain what NAD coenzymes do. There's four NAD coenzymes and they're the carriers and the transmitters of high energy electrons that make life possible. So you know how a, a, an electric vehicle or an electrical device has a power source, whether it's plugged into a wall or whether it's an onboard battery, and there's copper wires, right, that are going to all of the component parts that, that need that, that electrical current. Well, what people may not realize is that living things function on high energy electrons also. The high energy electrons come from our food right? Um, whether it's plant matter, you know, animal uh, substances, or even fungi, right? From eating, eating mushrooms, which are neither plants nor animals. But um, we're getting fuels in the form of protein, fat, and carbohydrate. And NAD coenzymes basically harvest high energy electrons. The, this process is used to make ATP, which drives our motion and it in, you know, it um, allows us to transmit ideas and to sense our, our environment. It allows us to repair all of our tissues and it requires, and it and is required for our biosynthetic processes because as I say, metabolism is our ability to convert everything that we eat into everything that we are. So we made all our own lipids, we made all our nucleic acids and proteins and um, so you can't do that without the NAD coenzymes. The NAD coenzymes basically coordinate um, the, all of the biological processes that, that make life possible. And that, you know, we, there's a kind of physics problem that uh, biology has solved, right? The physics uh, principle is expressed in the second law of thermodynamics, which states that in a in a closed system, entropy increases. Right. So if you were to rack a, you know, uh, uh, the balls on a pool table, right, and then come back a year later, you would find that they had jiggled away from where you left them. You add time and temperature to the to the system and you know shaking to the system they will be you know fully dispersed right but living things can kind of keep it together right 
we when we're growing when we're when we're little we're actually increasing in complexity right when you know we're babies are actually growing in size and complexity um and, but that requires fuel inputs and it requires metabolism to keep all of that together the four nad coenzymes are the central catalysts of all of those processes um the four co NAD coenzymes come under attack in all of the conditions of metabolic stress that we accumulate. And again, that's the use case for nicotinamide riboside, that it's the biggest piece of NAD that can get into cells and can allow us to have high functioning NAD coenzymes and be resilient to these conditions of metabolic stress that are trying to disturb our uh, billiard balls. And so we're really trying to keep um, our, you know, fitness together and keep our mental and physical capacities together. And, you know, that's basically the use case for NR as an NAD boosting substance. Thank you so much. We are not pool tables. We are better than pool tables. <laughs> <laughs> so what should more scientists incorporate NAD into their research? Are there needs for us to expand in NAD space? Uh, there are, you know, so so my laboratory has expanded into um, a rare disease called citrin deficiency. Um, we're interested in particular types of malignancies in which the NED system is disturbed. Um, it may surprise you to know that there are some fundamental aspects of NAD biosynthesis and homeostasis that are not uh, well understood that we're trying to, to figure out um, how NAD declines, you know, in heart failure, um, how um, and why NAD declines in inflammatory conditions, not fully understood. And so there's really a lot of uh, unsolved problems that, and, and then in addition, there's um, kind of wise evidence-based translational research that's necessary, right? So, you know, in a mouse, we can induce, you know, uh, diabetes in two, three months, and we can treat it in two, three months with nicotinamide riboside. It doesn't work that fast in human beings, right? It right. takes decades of, you know, sedentary behavior and, you know, overnutrition to, to produce um, fatty liver and, and diabetes in human beings. And so you can't treat you know, um, fatty liver in a human in 13 weeks. Although there was a, you know, a clinical trial that, you know, that actually saw a signal for, for fatty liver, liver in 13 weeks. We think that these trials have to be done with the right power and the right uh, patient population and, the, and wise uh, selection of primary endpoints in order to, to, to really test um, you know, effectively the the translational hypotheses of nicotinamide riboside. But safety is very well established for Niagen and and um, there are some positive results that are coming in. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yes, as are we through the CERT program, we share our material. Um, we've been giving it out for many years now, for 10 years, which is part of the whole reason why we are celebrating now and being able to provide that preclinical material, the clinical material plus placebo for research um, has just been an outstanding opportunity for us as a company to expand and grow the NAD space. And so from your perspective, how has being a SERP investigator been helpful to your research and your network? Well, it's been great. I mean, this has been a, a, a terrific um, you know, collaboration uh, for, for me. Um, over these years, you know, since I initially got, um, you know, a phone call from uh, Frank Jacksh, then the, uh, the the CEO and founder of, of Chromadex, you know, who told who told me about um, his interest in the company's interest in in nicotinamide riboside. So, um, you know, Chromadex has uh, provided uh, my group and and those of many of my collaborators with uh, pure nicotinamide riboside chloride and, um, you know, has been able to make, um, you know, on occasion labeled standards for, you know, very complex experiments and, um, 
has really supported the community, has supported international meetings on NAD. And so, you know, really, um, Chromadex is the commercial, you know, leader and the ethical leader in nicotinamide riboside research and um, and provision of nicotinamide riboside. So uh, for clinical studies as well as preclinical studies. So for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. And we are so grateful to have you as our chief scientific advisor as well. So any last words? Well, uh, I just wanted to, you know, collect, uh, congratulate uh, Chromadex on, on uh, this milestone. And, um, you know, uh, clearly the best is yet to come. Thanks. Thanks so much for chatting with me. Thank you so much, Dr. Brenner. I appreciate it.